Group Buy is one of the most significant enhancements to Excel of the last 20 years. It is absolutely amazing. It allows you to do pivot table type things with functions. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I can do stuff that you can't do with the regular pivot tables, like aggregating text, which I really love. Like here, I want to get a list of all the countries that are under mat, all the countries are under towel. You can't do that with the regular pivot tables. Also going to show you how to get a list of unique things and also a distinct count, which is very difficult with the regular pivot tables. All right, you can download a copy of this workbook and follow along, link in the description below, but let's get started. So here I'm going to do equals group by great new Excel function, and I'm going to select without the headers for starters, just this one and then comma, and then the country and then comma, then I can choose my function. Note that you have three mandatory inputs and a bunch more optional ones that are in square brackets. Don't get intimidated by them. Usually you don't need them, or if you do, they're pretty easy to use. I'm going to go through a couple of them. But what I would say is just uh, if you want to learn more, then I have more videos about it. I'm doing a series of these videos on group by pivot by. So here you have 17 different aggregations that you can use. Some percent of average, these are all in Excel, as is count, count, ah, min, max. Uh, but you have some other ones. Medium's not in Excel, but in particular, this one, array to text. This is great. So I just close my brackets because the others are optional and I get that. So Matt is Ireland, Oman, and Syria. Let's check. Yeah, perfect. Towel is these ones. Perfect. It's done it really, really well. Uh, then I've got the total. Usually you don't want the total with text, but yeah, there it is. Let's go through another one. So let's do group by. And let me show you a neater way of doing it. So that would be include those, include these as the values, comma, and then functions. I'm going to do array to text again, but then I'm going to do he headers. Yes. And show that's almost always the one that I choose and total. I'm going to do no totals because for text aggregations, usually you don't need that. There you go. It doesn't give you as much flexibility as pivot tables in terms of how to format the table, but you can't do this kind of aggregation at all in pivot tables. So it's pretty nice. Just to show you, there is another one that is kind of similar, but in the drop down list, you've got concat. I can click that and tab it. And concat will essentially just not do any separators between your text. So, not really that useful, I would say, but it does a similar kind of thing. The only other one that you would use with text would be account. And this is the only one of these that are available with a pivot table where it just has three for mat and five for towel. But let's go into another scenario where we have duplicates. So here I have towel, Jack's bought a towel once, Lisa's bought a towel twice, there's Jack again, there's Theo. So essentially I wanna know how many unique times there are for each one. So what you can do is you can write your own custom functions. So I'm gonna do equals group by again, and I'm gonna do this one, is going to be row fields, comma, and then my value fields are going to be customers, which has the duplicates. And then the function I'm going to use is going to be this thing called Lambda. Lambda allows you to write your own custom functions. So first I need to define a parameter. It doesn't matter what we give it here. I'm going to say Y, for example, and then I'm going to say, well, count out. So count the text values of unique and unique is a new-ish function that returns a unique list from something. And then I'm going to press Y because that is my parameter. And you'll see that there's an X next to it. The others all have F, X. These are functions. This is a parameter. So do with a lambda and how to use that. Close my brackets for unique. Close my brackets for count R. Close my brackets for lambda. And now I'm back to my group by. So I'll again do my comma and then field headers. Yes and show comma. And then I'll do the total depth, no totals, close my brackets, and I get this. So product, so Jack, Lisa, and then Theo, whereas towel has Theo, Jack. I can do a similar thing for the array to text. But firstly, let me show you what unique does. So equals unique will just take this and return only the unique values like that. What I can also do is I can sort them. So I can also do equals sort unique and don't need anything else. And then it sorts it from A to Z. Now, in this case, it was already sorted. That is purely by coincidence. But for example, if this Theo, these two Theos were changed to Barney, 
then it is not going to be sorted by default, but now it is sorted like this. All right, so how are we going to change the array to text to work with this? Well, I'm going to do equals group by, and I'm going to choose the row fields to be this again. I'm going to choose the customer to be the values, and then the function I'm going to do a lambda, and I'm going to say y again, and I'm going to say in the parameter calculation, array to text, which is just a standard Excel function. And then I'm going to do a sort and then a unique list of Y again. Close my brackets for the unique, close my brackets for sort, close my brackets for array to text, close my brackets for lambda. Back to the group by field headers, yes and show. And then total depth, zero, no totals. Close my brackets and this is how it is. Barney and Jack. This is the towel ones, sorry, the mat ones. And then the towel is going to be Barney, then Jack, then Lisa, even though it has sorted it like that. And these are all dynamic. So if I change this Lisa to be someone else, something like Fiona, then suddenly I get four in there. This one gets added in in Fiona. It's not like pivot tables that you have to manually refresh them here. It does it for you automatically. Uh, you have got pivot by as well. So you can do the same thing with pivot by for these. So for example, I can, for example, say equals pivot by. And with pivot by, you have an extra field for column fields. So I can say, for example, let's say customer is going to be in row fields and column fields is going to be this one. And then values is going to be country and then comma. And then I'm going to do a rate of text and then close my brackets like this, it tells me that there is a spill. So I'm just going to insert these and then the spill is kind of fixed. So yeah, Matt, Barney is Ireland, et cetera, et cetera. Here is kind of how it works. Uh -huh. So I'm actually going to change something here. I'm going to say field headers going to be yes, but don't show. I don't like using my headers in a pivot by. It just doesn't really work very well. There we go. Now this is a lot better. So these are the two for Jack, Matt and Jack is Oman and Syria. Perfect. That's what these two are. You can also use lambdas in this one in the same way. So yeah, I'm not going to go through that example again. If you've enjoyed that, my name is David Benham. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff and I'm making loads of videos on Group by Pivot by to kind of get a complete picture for everyone through my videos. All right. Thanks for watching.